And uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Jason Horsch, owner of Xanadu Gallery. I'd like to welcome you to another broadcast uh, from Xanadu Gallery in our art marketing series. Uh, and I'm pleased to be here again tonight with my good friend and co-host of this broadcast, Barney Davey. Barney, how are you this evening? Hey, Jason. Good to see you once again, and uh, glad to see that you made it with all the rain that we've had here in the last two days. Yeah. Did you uh, did you get flooded out up there? No, I live on uh, I live in a place called Desert Ridge. That a section of Phoenix called Desert Ridge, and it it really is a ridge where you have to go uphill. It's a slight incline, but you're we're on the top of a ridge here. So uh, no no flooding here, but boy, other place is unbelievable. Yeah, I know that uh, we're in central Phoenix, and we got a lot of rain, and there was some water on the roads and stuff. But boy, looking at the pictures, and you know, some of my friends who commute in from the uh, on the freeways and the outlying areas, boy, they really uh, really had a hard time. It, uh, I, I don't know, I I got a lot of emails from uh, artists and and clients and friends from around the country. You know the are you okay? Is your family okay? Kind of thing, and and uh, it always makes me wonder how the media is portraying uh, the events um, because I don't think it was nearly as bad as everybody was hearing that it was. But uh, the, the worse the disaster, I guess, the better the ratings. <laughs> We're on the news for some reason or another, right? Absolutely. So, uh, so this evening, uh, Barney and I want to talk a little bit about self-promotion, and this is a topic that we've uh, hit on before um, and discussed quite extensively. And, and goodness, Barney uh, is is an expert in this area. He's written a book that's uh, really related to self-promotion. And I think the last time we spoke, we just felt like um, we only scratched on the surface, and I'm sure even uh, again today we're only gonna gonna scratch on the surface there. But and and we may hit some of the same points we hit the last time, but uh, hopefully we'll come at it with a little bit different angle and and some different thoughts. So uh, let let's uh, let's dive in, Barney, and and uh, what maybe we should start by defining the concept. What is self promotion? You can give some thoughts, and I've got my own thoughts, and and we'll just start there. Yeah. It's, it's an attempt by someone or some organization to publicize themselves in a way. Um, some people say forcefully. I don't necessarily agree with forcefully, but I think you need to be, if you're going to make it work, you have to be aggressive about it. It, it, it comes down to this. If, if you're not going to toot your own horn, how can you expect anyone else to really get excited about what you're doing? You need to have that confidence and portray that confidence that you're doing something that's worthy and valuable and exciting and, and then you look for ways to push that all of those feelings that I just described out into the world in various forms of media. And I looked it up, uh, I just typed into Google define self-promotion and there were a couple of different definitions that came up. Um, the one that I liked the most was and. I'm not going to be able to tell you the source on this, but if you Google it, it'll be one of the first ones. It says, things that you do or say in order to make people notice you and think you are important. And I kind of liked the connotation of that, that um, um, you know, you may or may not be important, but self-promotion is the act of, of making people aware of you and making them think you are important. And, and in some ways that sounds kind of negative, like um, you know, I'm making myself self-important, but um, I think that it's right that, um, especially as an artist, um, and, and certainly my job in the gallery is helping people understand how important an artist is, even if I have to uh, manufacture some of that importance uh, to a certain degree. And, and if you think about, um, uh, you know, anyone out there who has any notoriety or fame. Um, the only reason they're important is because we give them that importance and and, um, and and perhaps they reflect that and and as a consequence feel they're important and oftentimes especially with celebrities they begin to believe that they are important um, I think you can run into some problems there but um, you know I, I think also that um, there's a perception that um, self-promotion is somehow the same as egotism or um, 
you know, self-important. And I, I hope that um, tonight Barney and I can, can maybe dispel a little bit of that and maybe just have a little bit of an attitude change. I think a lot of artists, um, they hate the idea of having to promote themselves. Um, you know, that's why I'm in business is because uh, artists like to be in the studio creating and don't want to have to think about doing it. But even those artists who are working with galleries um, and certainly those artists who are selling their own work are having to put a lot of effort forward to, um, you know, make themselves visible to galleries, uh, to, to build relationships with their collectors. Um, and so uh, I agree with Barney, self-promotion is just just absolutely critical. You got to do it. Um, you you don't have to be a braggart to be someone who's effective at self-promotion. In fact, you can be quite humble and still be um, effective as in using self-promotion. There, I believe there's a book. Certainly, uh, there's a, a website and probably a blog uh, related to this topic: self-promotion for introverts. Um, and if anybody feels like that's them, that that describes them, if that sentence describes them, then I encourage you to go there and look at that material. I've looked at some of it and um, found it to be useful, even if you weren't an introvert. Some of the information is useful, but it just explains that you don't have to be that, you know, life of the party, wearing the craziest loud clothing and the, you know, the center of attention in order. It doesn't to hurt. <laughs> if that is who you are naturally. Yeah, if it, if it comes to you naturally, otherwise you're just going to feel like a fool, and people people will you know their phony meter will be going off all over the place. So if you're going to be able, if you if you've got the goods to be able to do that, then go for it. I've certainly known a few artists who did, and some who I just like. Okay, I get it, but um, you know, you're not somebody that I want to be close to because of that that sense of self-importance, but yet yeah, they were so, their their personalities were so outrageous that it didn't matter. My opinion really mattered zero. They would be fawned on by all kinds of people in the media from the industry and lots of collectors. So, you know, again, my opinion really doesn't matter. And, and that's, I think, what comes down to, speaking of opinions and what matters, why people get tripped up on this is they're worried about what other people think. They they have this perception that oh they're going to think poorly of me because I'm promoting myself. Bah humbug! No, they're not. You you have to. That's your issue that you have to get over with. You have to get over that and not worry about what other people think. If you're coming from your genuine, authentic self, and you are talking enthusiastically about your art and what you do and what you've done with your life with regard to your art. There's no, there's no, there's no reason for you to ever feel like someone, you know, should look down upon you. If they do, that's their problem, not yours. Don't let other people give you their problems. I couldn't agree um, more uh, w w with what you're saying, and I think just kind of extending on that and, and kind of the attitude shift. Not only um, should you not worry about what people are thinking, but you should realize that um, a lot of times people are. They're fascinated by artists. They're interested in what you do, and you have something that's interesting to to offer them. And um, you know, you, you you resisting that urge and and being afraid to talk about yourself and your artwork um, in a lot of cases can be a real disservice to those people that you're um, you know you have the potential to build relationships with. Um, so I think if you look at what you're doing, your artwork as an important contribution to, um, to humanity and to, to the society, um, in a lot of ways I feel that you almost have an obligation to, to be willing to, to toot your own horn and share that information with people. And, and as Barney said, find ways to do it that are comfortable for you. You don't have to be, be um, you know, a natural in doing something that feels completely wrong to you. Find things that will, uh, that will allow you to feel more comfortable. And, and we're going to talk about some tips, and I think each of us have some ideas of tips of things that you could easily do to be more proactive in in your self promotion, um, so I, I think maybe a, a, another good kind of topic in this area is to to think about who do you promote yourself and your artwork to? Where do you begin this process? And and what do you think, Barney? Where where 
the, the artists who are listening tonight, where should they be thinking about finding their, their audience and, and um, their uh, base of people to promote to? Well, uh, in, in my opinion, artists have uh, two primary audiences in most cases. Everybody's career is slightly different, but I believe you need to promote yourself to potential collectors and people who are maybe not even going to buy from you immediately but are influential in some way in the community. They're high up in an art organization or they're well connected in other ways and just by knowing them they can help you. So those kind of people and then of course galleries. You're, what we're talking about is finding ways to get awareness for you as an artist among people who can do something about that, help, in other words, help you um, either sell the art in the case of a gallery or buy it from you directly or recommend you to someone who would buy it from you directly. So those are, that's it. The rest of um, I, those are the most important ones. And I want to say that probably everybody, to some extent or another, is someone who's a potential because your, may, your neighbor may not like your abstract art, but they're Dennis' friend may be redoing their gallery, and if you've shown it to them, they might say, you know, my, I know an artist who does fantastic abstracts. You should take a look at it. So you never know where you're, uh, where doing some promotion is going to go and how that influence will, will travel. It's not necessarily the, the first degree of separation on everything that works. Well, and, and um, by necessity, it means you're going to have to get out of your studio from, from uh, time to time. You know, obviously, being in the studio and creating is critical, and um, production is important, and, and honing your skill and your talent. But, you know, if you're not uh, out in the world and talking to people, you're just never going to have those opportunities to... Um, to, to share with people, and so getting out um, and and participating in art-related events. Um, you, you know, here in Arizona, we have a, a couple of different art walks that go on in the various uh, areas, and uh, getting out to those and and uh, taking friends with you and and trying to build relationships with people you meet there. Um, going to gallery openings, um, you know, even if it's not a gallery that you're represented in, um, but being aware of what's going on in the art community is a great place to start. As Barney mentioned, you want to go for people um, who are predisposed to be interested in art, and one of the best places to find them is at uh, art-related events. And so I always encourage artists to become very... Um, very active and very visible in their art community. Sign up for all of the gallery um, email lists in your area. Uh, go to the openings, and you know you you've got to be a little bit careful because you don't want to um, you know try and outshine the person who's being featured in a in an event or anything like that. But you just want to be visible and um, and contribute in some way. Um, and and then also as you know as Barney mentioned, just with everyone you know, taking the opportunity to to share the fact that you are an artist and and talking about the the artwork that you're creating. Absolutely. Um, I, I recently, in the last maybe in July, I wrote a, a, a uh, an art, a post in ArtPrintIssues.com called the the power of uh, the backstory, and it was uh, it was motivated by uh, the book, which I recommend to anybody, the supermodel in the Brillo box by Don Thompson. The the the, uh, the subline on that is backstories and the peculiar economics from the world of contemporary art, and he gets into detail about art and, and art. The uh, the value of art is in context. They give an example of a. I can't remember the violinist's name, but he was playing a, like a $300,000 Stradivarius. The people pay $225 uh, to come hear him play in a symphony hall. He, as, an, as a test, he went and <clears throat> set up in a Washington, D.C. suburb in, uh, uh, on the metro and played for 45 minutes with his uh, same expensive violin and the violin case opened, and most people walked right by with no idea what was going on, and I think he collected about $32 in 45 minutes. It's exactly the same thing that, you know, a few weeks earlier, the concert hall was full of people who 
gotten dressed up to the nines and paid very expensive prices to hear the exact same music and the same thing. So it's what the book is talking about and what, to some degree, what the value of art comes down to is context. What do you put around it that makes it more valuable? You know, another example from that book was some artists, again, name eludes me at the moment, but he had a series of paintings that were essentially, it was a, it was a painting of dripped sponges dipped in blue paint, and that was it. They, so they talked about quite often it's people like Jason or in some cases of the contemporary art market, people with Sotheby's and the other uh, auctions, but this, these are things applying no matter what. They get, well, what are we going to talk about this? There's nothing to say about this. So they decided it was painted in nine or created in 1961. So they talked about um, the fact that uh, Yuri Gar Gargarin was the first uh, astronaut in space, and that the Berlin Wall fell down, and and uh, or the Berlin Wall went up, and Kennedy was elected, and uh, all the things that were momentous that happened in 1961. And by just that promotion and relating it to things that are almost Unrelated, other than it was all done in the same year, the the work sold beyond the was several million dollars above the high end of the estimate. So, what we're talking about here is self promotion, context, giving people um, enough reason to feel enthusiastic about your art, so that they want to own it, proudly want to own it, and gladly pay the price that you put on it. Um, I uh, know an artist here in Phoenix who um, kind of in that that effort to reach out and and uh, get their work out in front of more people is very proactive in anything in the art community. So, um, and she does I, she does some things that I think of as kind of outside the box. So she even though she doesn't have children in school, um, she participates in the art masterpiece program for the schools in her area. Um, and if you're not aware of what that program is, she gets to go into schools and teach children about great works of art and do art projects with them. Um, you know, they're somehow related to these great artists. So, you know, maybe they'll talk about Jackson Pollock and then do some action painting or, um, you, you know, talk about Rodin and do some sculpture. Um, and she is not necessarily um, doing that with, with some kind of devious idea that, hey, if I do this, I'll have an in with the parents of these children or build relationships that way. Um, you know, she, I, she does it because she really believes that art is important and that it starts with children. But at the same time, if she's um, at an event and a parent is there, she's not afraid to talk about herself and her art. And um, you know, and I think this points to another uh, key point of self-promotion. And, and and Barney, you've talked a lot about this, but that if you are, you know, putting positive out into the universe, positive is going to come back to you. And and so by giving that way, you know, you might be volunteer for a museum board in your area or. Um, go out and uh, participate in community events or those kind of things. Um, uh, again, you're going to have a positive experience just for, for having participated in something like that, but it can also lead to opportunities for networking and, and building your relationships. Um, and, and, you know, even beyond that, you could... I um, found that by working to educate my collectors... Um, to talk to them about, uh, you know, some of the basic principles of art and art collecting. Um, I've built some some great relationships and, and um, uh, strengthened the relationships that I might already have. And I think as an artist, if you were thinking about ways that you might share your knowledge about art and the art world, you would, um, you would find that you'd have those same positive experiences. I love everything you just said. One thing that really resonated with me was an uh, example of somebody going out and teaching children, and that leads me to think about a, a book that I've um, creatively borrowed the concept from. It's called the uh, Becoming Slightly Famous, or I, I believe is the name of it, and um, it's one of those concepts that just makes a whole lot of sense to me. You can become well known for something. Like that artist you're talking about, I would think 
if she's already taken the effort to put this together in the schools, why not look for other places where she could present the same material, maybe to adults, possibly just put on a series at a local library or junior college or even a, a, a full university, whatever is available. You know, all of those things certainly are here in the greater Phoenix area between ASU and Grand Canyon University and the junior colleges all around and the libraries that offer free meeting rooms if you have something to, you want to present something and you're not selling something. If, you could, if you're not afraid to publicly get out there and do public speaking, that is a fantastic way to get your, to get, to become known authoritatively as something that's not necessarily about your art, but maybe art related, like you're talking about. The, I, I want to talk to you about the masters. Or, or become, you know, I've suggested uh, become uh, well versed in the art history of your local area. Maybe there's somebody really famous that came out of your area. Uh, talk about that person or your or your region or forget about your region and you know become an expert on Picasso or someone else and, and um, just have this body of knowledge and become kind of a go-to person. If the media becomes aware of that it can turn into something positive to you where they will... Or if you make the media aware of it. <laughs> Yeah, well, that would be <laughs> good point. Make the media aware of it, so if if they see that you have value and you're authoritative, you can become a go-to person for a certain topic. And the halo effect is that you're also an artist, and a certain number of people are going to be want to know more about you and your art. Great way to self-promote in a soft way that's not really. Kind of beating your own drum, but getting your name out there in other ways. Yeah, and I think that um, you know that brings up a, a good point that if you can get other people talking about you, giving them an excuse to talk about you, um, that kind of goes a little bit beyond self promotion because now you've enlisted other people to to do it for you. But but boy, that's incredibly valuable to get a, a testimonial or a recommendation from from someone else and. And uh, I wouldn't be afraid to encourage uh, those people that you come into contact to, you know, if, if, if you ever have someone, a friend, who's looking for artwork, I'd really appreciate it if you'd make them aware of me. Um, you know, there's a great little bit of, of self-promotion on a one-on-one -on -one basis that can then multiply it and spread out and, and maybe even consider um, giving people the tools they might need to help promote you. If you have um, uh, postcards with images of your artwork, uh, present it to someone who's bought your uh, a piece of your artwork and tell them kind of the same thing that I just said. You know, I'm I'm always uh, looking for the opportunity to share my artwork. If you have friends or, or family members who are interested in art, please pass along one of these cards. And if you run out, I'd be happy to provide you with with more. And you know, if you've designed something that's attractive and and um, uh, well designed, um, you'll find that uh, that people are are willing to do that the next time uh, the the conversation comes up, or they're showing someone a piece of art, your piece of artwork in their home. When I lived in uh, Orange County, there was a fellow who had started a, a, a meetup. I hope most of you know at least what a meetup is. It's a an organ. I think it's meetup.org or meetup.com where you can go and find like-minded people that will be on, usually on a monthly basis. It could be, you know, the Arizona WordPress Society or the Arizona SEO Society or the, or the local uh, um, Orchid Society. It doesn't matter. It could be Bridge or just about any kind of entertainment or something that you have a commonality of interest with. Well, there, this fellow, his uh, meetup was... Uh, he had put together his own version of an art walk, only he, he would rent a bus and charge his people so much money, and they would go to various galleries on Friday nights and then end up afterwards going to um, some kind of restaurant or someplace with uh, hors d'oeuvres and drinks and so forth so they could keep socializing. But he was, the, he was the facilitator of that, and I thought that was a great idea. What if an artist were doing that or just got involved with that? Anybody who would want to do that, there, of course, there will be some party animals who just look at it as an opportunity to mingle, but 
most people who would do that have at least um, a, a greater affinity for art and potentially buying art than the average the, than the general public. So if that's something that's interesting to you, think about doing it yourself. If that's beyond what you feel comfortable doing, encourage somebody else that you know to do it and you know, ride their coattails a little bit. But it's just one of their of dozens, maybe hundreds or even thousands of different ideas that you can grasp to use self promotion in a way that works for you. It's all about just getting more people aware of who you are, what you do, and like Jason said earlier, if you can get them talking about you as well, then wow, now you're really cooking. Yeah, and, and we should be clear that um, what we're talking about here is um, it's not going to result in a sudden and dramatic and overnight transformation of your career um, where, you know, you're suddenly going to triple or quadruple your sales and, and, you know, become fabulously wealthy and successful, um, you know, more than anything, I think it's just a mindset about how you're going to approach the, the, the way you get your artwork out there and the way you speak about yourself and the way you think about yourself. And, um, you know, we've mentioned a couple of times that we don't want you to do anything that feels unnatural, but at the same time, um, it might be helpful for you to think of yourself a little bit as um, my I am personally an introverted, shy, reticent person, but as an artist, I am going to take on a persona of someone that's maybe a little bit different than my natural self, um, and I am going to be more uh, out outspoken and, and more self-promoting, and um, you could almost think of it as uh, a little bit as, as a, uh, a, a, an alter ego, if you will. Um, and, and then, like I say, um, and and I maybe I'll point to a couple of examples of artists that uh, I work with in the gallery. Um, one in particular, Gijeme. Some of you may have met him at various shows or art festivals, and if you have, you'll remember him instantly because he is a very outgoing um, and very personable uh, artist. And whenever he meets someone new, he's sure to shake their hand and tell them what a pleasure it is to meet them. And then he'll guide them around his artwork and tell them stories about it and just very actively engage with them. And, and even if he's not in the gallery, uh, maybe he were out uh, to dinner with a client or, um, you know, I'm sure just even in his day-to-day -day life, he's just very personable and, um, and, and very fun to talk to. And he's amazing at keeping in touch with people. So he's not just going to talk about his artwork and about himself but he's going to get them talking about themselves and get to know them and start to build a relationship with them. And, um, and, and he's also amazing at remembering who people are and details about them. We, we may not all be as good as he is at having that kind of uh, almost photographic memory about, uh, about people and, and the interactions he's had with them, but we can all benefit from the concept of realizing that self-promotion isn't all about self. It's also about building relationships and... and um, um, you know, the more the the deeper that relationship is, the the, the better people are going to interact with you, and the the, the happier we're all going to be. Come on, we let's be honest. We all hate that guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody should make it that easy. You know, I, I of course I jest, but there are some people who just seem to be born with a natural knack for. Every they're everybody's friend, and they've got that kind of memory where they can pull details out of the conversation that shock people that you would remember. You know what what we talked about when we met months ago. Um, you can't just like you can't transform your career overnight. You can't transform yourself to become that person, but that doesn't mean that you can't ramp up what you're doing with yourself and it's not all necessarily in person you know I'm a big proponent of networking and we've kind of been talking around that in one way or another that uh, you need to get out there and mix it up and, and be with people and press the flesh and, and be seen but it, it also extends to everything else that you're doing you know make, make sure that you review 
everything that you're doing because when so all the self promotion sort of encompasses a lot of different things, branding for one, and marketing and. Look, but I, what I'm getting at is look at your marketing materials. Do your marketing materials have a call to action? Do you, is it easy to get a hold of you on your website or on your blog? Are you offering people an uh, easy way to subscribe? Are you perhaps giving them an incentive to subscribe? I think it even goes down to um, you know, how do you ship things? Do, does your shipping container have your website on it? Um, your, your packing materials, just everything that you can, anything that you can think about that has a way for you to put your brand and become, help raise your awareness, then if it's not overly expensive, just start incorporating that into what you're doing. And the other thing would be to try to get some consistency on it so that your, your blog and your website and your business cards and your um, invoices or they all have a harmonious look to them. It's not hodgepodge. So that you begin to build kind of a visual identity that helps you elevate yourself and promote yourself. And uh, we, we shouldn't um, talk about self-promotion without talking about some of the, uh, the innovations uh, technologically that have become available to us to help you expand your reach. Uh, and of course the big one is social media. Um, we should at least spend a few minutes talking about that. Here's a great opportunity. You know, you talk about how sometimes it's difficult to um, get into groups and find people who are interested in art or who are interested in the things that you're interested in. Boy, Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest, here are tools that are ready-made and, in essence, synthesize the real-world um, connections that people make with one another. And you have an opportunity suddenly to reach out to groups of people um, from across the globe that you never would have had the opportunity to before. And um, I would certainly be looking for that. I mean, we all know, I know you're spending time on Facebook anyway. Why not take some of that time that you're spending on Facebook and look for opportunities to build relationships with people who would be interested in your art and to share your art? Um, if you're not posting your art on Facebook, um, even if it's just to, currently to your friends, um, you're missing a great opportunity to have your artwork spread out to the world and, and go a little bit viral and, and have opportunities for people to see it that might not have otherwise seen it. Thoughts on social media, Barney? Absolutely. Um, you Speaking of just putting your art on social media, I think you need to have kind of a mix of what you're doing. If you're just, if you're, if you're not personable and you're not interacting with people and, and putting some things, of, of, use social media to put some things about yourself out there uh, so that it's not just, hey, look at my new art, look at my new art, look at my new art. People will turn a deaf ear to that eventually. So you have to have a, a, a mix. And another thing that you can do with, with um, social media, you can do it in person too, is use your connections to help other people. Knowing that the good that you do helping one person will come back to you in some other way. So if you see an artist whose work you really like, let, the, let, let your followers know about it. Share what you're doing. Share share your followers with other people who, whose art you really believe in and help them. They'll help you or some other people will help you. And I'm, I, there's so many different aspects of social media that are fascinating to me. I, I am truly interested in learning more about uh, Pinterest. I think it's going to become um, extremely valuable for artists more so than it is already. And, that's, that's high on my radar screen of things to investigate. How can artists use Pinterest because of the, the demographics and the fact that it is totally a visual medium? That and then of course Instagram is sort of the same thing and of which I have very little knowledge because I'm not participating in it. Um, Jason, you and I had this conversation the other day about Twitter. Social media is great but it can be a time suck and you have to be careful of what what you spend your time on and you have to have a buy-in for it personally I think for it to work if you're just there to make money with it and trying to crank something out it, it's probably not going to work nearly as well as you'd hope for it but 
that said, social media is an extremely powerful tool when well used. I thought I'd um, I want to throw out an idea, also tech related, um, but but more in the the, the physical sense. Um, I, I, I have the opportunity to travel quite a bit, um, and when I'm flying, it, you know, it's often the case that you're seated next to someone, and you're going to be sitting there with them for quite some time. And I'm sure as many of the many artists have had similar scenarios, either flying or maybe you're in an off a dentist's office waiting for the doctor, or you know, whatever it is. And invariably, you'll start a conversation. And in my case, people will ask me, what do you do? And I say, I, I own a gallery in Scottsdale. And in, invariably, their next question is going to be, oh, really, what kind of art do you sell? Um, and I'm sure for our artists in the audience, they want to know what kind of art you create. And um, after having that happen many, many times, I felt like I got pretty good at... Um, you know, explaining and talking about what my gallery does and the kind of artwork that we represent. But one day I realized, I'm an idiot. Why am I telling them when I could show them? We all know that a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, and so I just put together a very simple, quick, quick and dirty, really, get what I call a gallery portfolio. Uh, you know, many of you artists have your portfolios, but I I doubt you're carrying them around with you all the time. But I made mine, and I'm just going to throw it up here really quick. I, I put mine on my tablet um, as a PDF, and if I'm sitting next to someone on the plane and that comes up, I can pull this out and hand it to them, and they can just very quickly see a little bit about uh, our gallery and what we do and some of the artwork that we carry. and man, it really sparks some great conversations and typically will end up trading business cards. I'll add that person to my mailing list. Um, and I've had several people who I've flown with who when they've come to Scottsdale or if they live here will come into the gallery and I get an opportunity to, to work with them. And um, I think you're just missing a huge opportunity um, if you don't have images of your artwork on your tablet or on your smartphone even to be able to show people those images um, when you're having that that conversation. Um, and never has anyone said, oh, you gotta be kidding me. You know, you're trying to show me your, they're fascinated. They, you know, they can't get enough of it. Um, and it's just a fun conversation starter um, and, and a good way for them to get a much much better idea of my gallery than I could ever give them in spending four hours on an airplane trying to tell them what what the gallery is. It's like that old American Express card uh, saying, never leave home without it. And, you know, that, as you're saying that, I'm, I'm thinking back to the heyday of our Art Expo in the early 90s when Art Expo New York was the show for trading consumer with, which is a fabulous show at the... Uh, Jacob Gavitt Center, thousands of people, tremendous art, lots of sales. It's the most exciting event of the year in many cases for many artists and the most profitable. Uh, quite often there were big parties, private parties afterward, and I was lucky enough to be invited to one for an artist by the name of Michelle Delacroix, who, who is an introvert and uh, has a family surrounding him and doesn't really do any promotion himself, but his family does a tremendous job of it for him, so that's an example of not having to do it yourself if, you, if you've got an organization, um, particularly a family that will do it for you. But there was an unveiling at Maxime's, which is a very Tony uh, restaurant, nightclub, that was closed for this event, and it was an open bar and uh, catered with a, a, a full dinner. Robin Leach was there and Ivana Trump were there to pull the unveiling of his $40,000 original, which sold that night, and I'm sure it paid for the entire evening with the sale of that original, plus who knows how many other sales from all the other you know, well-heeled people that were there in that uh, gathering. I, I was in attendance with an artist, uh, um, Carol Furman, who's a, a sculptor, and I, I would her, her goal is to be in the MoMA. She wants to be in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. That's a pretty lofty goal. And if any artist I've ever met has the goods to get there, I think she's got as good a shot as any. 
So I will say that out of this is a room full of maybe 500 people. I don't know. Was, I, I'm, I'm not sure. The nightclub was full. Um, she was arguably the most accomplished artist in the room. So certainly, she would never exhibit at Art Expo. It was a book. It would be a ding on her reputation as far as she saw it to be at a kind of a commercial show like Art Expo. But nonetheless, she was there knowing that she might see encounter somebody who she would want to know and pursue. So even though she had a rather a, a very small handbag, in that handbag were her promotion materials. This was in the days before tablets, so she probably would have had one of those. And she was she was as well armed to do business and, and use those brochures selectively with a handful of people, gallery owners and other people, potential media types and so forth that she met that night and she gave them that material, took their cart and at the same time made an appointment, let's get together and mail them down for a time or at least I'm going to call you on Tuesday and we'll do something. So that to me was one of the most pure examples of self-promotion, being prepared like you were just talking about, Jason, doing it selectively. And she was extremely classy, never came off as brash or braggadocio, but you start asking her about what she does, she was ready to talk about it, and if you were the right potential uh, person, she was ready to whip some material on you and take that further immediately. I That was mid 90s so a long time ago, and you can tell I'm still very impressed by how she handled herself that night, and I think it's an example of what any artist can do on, on some level, just be prepared and be willing to talk about your art enthusiastically. Yeah, and I think that's a that's a real key, what you just said, on some level. Um, whatever you're doing today in terms of self-promotion, um, be it at the, the level you were just talking about, Barney, or nothing, all of us can stand to do a little bit more um, in, in terms of promoting our, our artwork and and and, um, and ourselves and so I would just suggest that you t take a look at what opportunities you have for self-promotion um, and what opportunities are available to you either in your area or online and make a commitment that over the next month you're going to actively pursue one more opportunity to get yourself out there and and um, even if at this first uh, first outing you're not going to be um, actively talking to everyone about your artwork maybe you're just trying to get out there more than you currently do but but then make a commitment that each and every month you're going to do a little bit more towards um, self promotion and and learn some skills or or practice um, you know join Toastmasters or something like that to to make yourself uh, uh, a better public speaker and and look for those opportunities. Uh, to to expand the reach of of your artwork. Now, Barney, let's um, we're, we're quickly running out of time. We've got some good questions that have come in, um, both okay. email and in our Q and A. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, you can on the screen you should see, and it'll show up differently for everyone. And some people, it's the upper right, it'll say Q and A, or down in the lower left, it'll say, "Do you want to join the conversation?" If you click on that, you can type your questions in. Um, and we won't have time to get to all of them, but let's just hit a few questions. Um, and uh, I'm going to take one from Charlotte. And uh, her question, and we kind of addressed this, and, and again, we're going to have to keep our answers brief here, but she wants to know, I, she says, I'm naturally reticent and find it difficult to toot my own horn. How can I be effective and still be true to my nature? Um, is it possible to promote my art effectively without feeling as though I'm being arrogant? And I think that um, my two-word response is that if you're feeling arrogant, that's you, not the people around you. Um, and I would just say experiment. Try, try being a little bit more forthcoming than you have been in the past. And I think you'll see that you get a positive reaction to that, that you don't have, uh, you're not going to feel negative or, or bad. And then just push a little bit more, uh, more next time. I agree. That get read that book, uh, self promotion for introverts. It's eye opening. It's actually it takes it turns the equation inside out and shows how you can turn that into a, a positive instead of something 
that's a, a negative. Um, someone is asking if it's going to be recording available later. Yes, if it's not, if you're not seeing it streaming well, you'll be able to see this later on. Thanks for asking. I've got another practical question on the social media front from Deborah. Uh, she asks, if I post photos of my work on social media sites, is it wise to watermark them? And she got a lot of uh, upvotes on that one, so a lot of people seem to be curious about it. Uh, again, I'm giving a short answer here, but I think that um, I spend a lot of time looking at art online and on social media. Um, and unless you can do it in a very, very subtle way, I find that watermarking um, detracts from the artwork. And I, I get irritated if I see too much watermarking going on. I, I think you know your concern is that someone's going to steal your image or use it in, in some nefarious way. Um, and I just, I, I doubt, I, I have huge doubts that that's happening enough to make it worth the degradation of your image to have a big ugly watermark on it. Um, you know, the cat's already out of the bag as far as that goes. And you, if you spend some time looking at artwork, you're going to see that um, there are a lot of great artists out there who are putting their imagery out there and not worrying about the the watermark. I agree. Um, don't worry about being knocked off. Worry about being the best, most innovative artist that you can become. Then, if you get knocked off, you can start worrying about it. But if, if you're not well known and being knocked off by Chinese oil painting villages, then you're worrying about something that's not going to. You haven't made it yet if you haven't been knocked off by a. a, a <laughs> just, just, you know, kind of don't. That's, that's, that's dealing in the negative aspect. Get, in the, get yourself in the positive aspect. What can I do that's going to help me ramp up my art? And, and make me more successful, and how can I be more innovative and creative, and how can I make things that people are just going to love? You know, you start doing that, you will get knocked off, but it doesn't matter. You will have, you will have arrived in some way, and if you do, if you get to that point, you will be knocked off. It's just part of the art business. Sorry. So whether you watermark it or not, they're going to knock you off. Don't, don't, uh, we've talked enough about it. Next. Next. Uh, Nancy asked about the portfolio that I showed, um, if I feel that's better than just using your website. Um, and I have no problem using your website. Uh, the problem is, uh, if you're at 35,000 feet, um, unless you're willing to pay for the uh, GoGo -Go internet access or whatever, uh, you know, I couldn't necessarily access the website. So, um, and that may be the case. I just like something that's simple and that I can control what I'm showing. So. Uh, and it points to an, another, um, I, I think, important thing, and that is that I, in this effort to gain some some uh, recognition for yourself and your work, it's going to be invaluable to you to at least have some rudimentary uh, design, digital design skills. Um, take a class, um, do, you know, even if it's just an online class or a class at your community college. Because having the ability to control your own printed materials or, or your online materials and be able to put a, a simple brochure together um, is one of the, the it's going to give you flexibility to do things you just wouldn't otherwise be able to do. So I would encourage you to put some, some time and effort into cultivating that, uh, that skill. I agree. Um... Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com is a great place to go and build uh, free, down, quick and easy uh, graphic design things. But they also have a, a blog that takes you through step by step on almost anything you'd want to know about how to do graphic design. That if you haven't really ever studied graphic design, go there and just read through their blogs on, on uh, everything they talk about, typography and uh, using color com uh, using colors uh, effectively. I, I can't even uh, just go there. Canva it's like canvas with an no s dot com. You'll be happy I told you about it. Yeah, it's a site that uh, Barney put me onto, and it's a great, great resource. I'm gotta... afraid. Um, once again, we've we've run out of time before we've run out of questions and run out of topic. Um, this conversation, uh, as you all know, though, is ongoing. We uh, uh, Barney and I do this this broadcast uh, every month, the second Tuesday of every month, and um, we'll certainly be continuing it. Um, and of course, you can follow both of us online. Um, just just uh, search for us on uh, Facebook and Twitter, and uh, most importantly, on our websites. 
Uh, my website, the one that you'll be most interested in for getting this kind of information is red.blog.com. And uh, Barney, where should they follow you? Um, I'll make it easy. You can go to artbusinessblog.com. Perfect. Um, if let me let me do a little quick self promotion here. I just published a new book with my co-author Dick Harrison called How to How to Sell Art to Interior Designers. If you want to learn more about that, you can go to barneydavy.com forward slash designers. Barneydavy.com forward slash designers. And that's my self promotion for me for this week. And Jason, always a pleasure. Look forward to it uh, uh, next month, the uh, second Tuesday, same time, same place, different talk. Absolutely. We'll look forward to uh, seeing all of you in our uh, next session and to keeping in touch. Hope everybody has a great evening. Um, I am switching over. I've got a, another broadcast here um, for our mentorship, and so I know that a good number of you are following the mentorship program, and so I'll see you guys online in just a few minutes with uh, the artist Brian Gross. Marty, we'll talk to you soon. All right, Jason. Peace out, everyone. Take care.